study for the Downingtown High School's East, Downingtown High School West, and the STEM Academy. Um, since this is a yearly approval, um, and the document that I looked at is 95 pages long, Dr. Chance, is there anything that you want to highlight as changes that are occurring? Because I would imagine a good portion of it has stayed the same. Yeah, actually, yeah, uh, so this obviously represents our program of study in terms of the course options for our students as they enter our high schools. Um, this is typically if we would add new courses and those types of things where we'd be approving those. Uh, given the, where we are in our curriculum review cycle, we're actually not proposing any additional courses, so it's actually quite similar to last year, uh, with the exceptions of some changes being made to our dual enrollment programs um, uh, in that uh, we'll be, uh, and to, we're intending to end a partnership that we have with Harrisburg University, replace it with a partnership with Immaculata University, uh, and also so we've added some specificity around some of our dual enrollment programming in our uh, college and the high school programming. Uh, and so that's enumerated in the in the program of study. Also, some uh, in terms of how we offer some courses, that's something that might change from year to year. So this year, for example, we've added a blended option in one of our content areas. We've removed some blended options in some other areas just based on enrollment and student interest. Uh, but again, in terms of the actual course offerings, there hasn't been uh, any changes outside of our dual enrollment. Could you, or Dr. Chance, could you kind of highlight a little bit more of the dual enrollment program and like what that is and, you know, how our students can graduate from high school with a certain number of credits that could be, you know, recognized at the, you know, at college should they continue their education career? Because I think that's something that is a great offering that we have that maybe, I don't know how many students take advantage of it. You know, if you could kind of speak to, you know, that program a little bit more. Sure, dual enrollment programming in general just allows students to be able to earn college credits um, while they're high school students. Uh, typically, the partnerships that we engage in with universities allow us to take courses that we already teach, uh, often AP courses or honors level courses. Uh, and after a review of our curriculum, if the university agrees that it meets the uh, criteria or qualification for the award of credits uh, from the university, they then allow our teachers to teach the course, our students to pay. Um, uh, college tuition, essentially, and, and books, et cetera, and, and uh, earn college credit. Um, catch, of course, is not every university accepts dual enrollment credit. And so, like AP, when students try and take advantage of earning those credits, uh, they are doing so, understanding that uh, if they intend to go to a particular university, those credits may not be uh, accepted. But uh, we, we do believe it's an opportunity for our students to be able to earn college credits while still in high school that uh, uh, parents may be interested in taking advantage of. And so you've seen us, I think, grow those opportunities over the last few years. Do you have a sense for numbers, like how many kids participate? I don't know off the top of my okay. head. I can certainly uh, okay. investigate that further. Because I had an interview with Dr. Cordell for my son, and that was the number. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry, Madhu. Uh, I said, uh, don't take my word for it, but I had a meeting with Dr. Cordell because my son is a sophomore this year. He doesn't qualify because he goes to STEM. Uh, but it was informational, and I think this year the number was close to 56. 